Government introduced Bill 45, which places a ban on flavored tobacco, including menthol. What we see time and time again is that when a tobacco product is banned, demand for the illegal substitute spikes. Without having first introduced effective measures to address contraband tobacco, Ontario, through Bill 45, is effectively handing organized crime groups a huge portion of Ontario's, Ontario's tobacco market. So did you get all that? Because he's talking truth. Ontario is looking to pay down its debt, and what they have come up with, which seems ludicrous to some, is going after those who make a living by selling contraband tobacco on the black market. A big mistake, says Gary Grant, who is speaking out and saying, this is going to make the problem a lot worse. And he joins me now at the desk. Good to have you, sir. Nice to be here again. I mean, your whole career, I mean, I worked with you many, many years ago, is in policing. Mm -hmm. If anyone understands the contraband of the black market, it would be you. And now your organization, uh, which is the National Association Against Contraband Tobacco, is focused on stopping the flow of contraband. The Liberal government seems to think that this is a good cash grab to help pay down the bills, and you say what? Well, I would say to them that they, t they need to take more meaningful action. In the last four budgets, they've introduced, uh, or said they were going to introduce tough anti-contraband measures to stop the contraband sales, which is actually being, uh, being uh, done by organized crime. The RCMP says 175 organized criminal gangs that are taking these contraband cigarettes off the reserves, from the reserves, is delivered to them, then they deliver it all around. 175 gangs selling it to kids, too. Yeah. So we need some tough action. We need our officers to have the uh, law enforcement tools to be able to uh, properly enforce, which is basically a sophisticated drug distribution network. Yeah. Because these, also, these cigarette uh, uh, smugglers also sell drugs, guns, and even done some human smuggling. We're talking about bad gangs here. Sure. So it needs some tough measures. The Ontario has promised it, but come up with minor measures. Minor measures. I mean, I look, is it lip service? Well, I wouldn't it's, say it. It makes for good headlines, but to truly think that they are going to drive uh, revenue by shutting this down with the measures they've put in place is would be impossible. The measures no? that are put in place would just be like water off a duck's back because it's so lucrative. And what, what we're talking about today is the menthol cigarettes. So uh, less than two weeks since they introduced their fall economic ups update and the, and the uh, Mr. Souza said that they were going to take tough action against contraband to try and receive their get their tax money back. Mm -hmm. Well it was the same watered down stuff and yet less than two weeks later they talk about banning menthol cigarettes, the sale of regulated legal menthol cigarettes which was five percent of the market which uh, works out to about 300 million cigarettes a year but guess what that's Stopping the sale of regulated cigarettes, it's fine that that's what they want to do, but that market, those people that smoke the uh, are menthol are now going to find these cigarettes because there's already twice as many menthol and flavored cigarettes on, on the market that are contraband that are legal. So they don't even seem to be, like, they're sort of like the not shoot straight gang. They say they want to uh, stop contraband and stop it in its tracks and yet they're they're opening a new market, a bigger market for contraband. So where would someone who particularly wants menthol cigarettes, and I'm not even sure, I mean look, if the government wants to get rid of smoking, then they've got to stop their addiction to making money off of smoking because it's a huge revenue maker for the province. So they talk out of both sides of their mouth. They say they want to stop people from smoking, but they can't help but be addicted to the revenue they make. So they want to stop menthol, and I'm not really understanding. Why are they going after menthol, and where will those who like that particular brand of cigarette go to get them? Well, I suspect menthol because it's probably perceived that young people who are just at the cusp of maybe starting to smoke uh, would prefer to smoke something tasty like menthol or flavored, so it might be nipping it in the bud. And yet the criminals will sell menthol, are, they are now, they're selling it up to 11 and 12 years old, so that's not going to nip anything in the bud. It's just going to uh, increase the market. And uh, I forget the second part of your question. Uh, so where are those who like this particular brand, where are they going to go? Are they going to be taking a trip outside of Toronto to, let's say, Caledonia to buy their cigarettes? Well, it's a lot easier it's than that. It's a lot that. cheaper because when I've done reports on this, I mean, it is a, it, you can get, what, 180 cigarettes for 
under 20 bucks. Kids can buy a, a baggie of 200 cigarettes, contraband cigarettes, for the cost of a movie ticket. Eight yeah, it's to incredible. Eight, eight to ten bucks. So some people do drive to the uh, First Nations uh, reserves and go to the smoke shacks and buy stuff. Which they're not supposed to do, but there's no one out there policing it. Well, they're not supposed to do it if, without paying the taxes, right? Yeah. They, they buy it and they're supposed to be paying their provincial and or their federal taxes if the federal tax hasn't been paid. But what's happening now is it's so lucrative. It's such a cash cow for organized crime that they're taking possession bikers, different types of gangsters, you name it, they're taking possession of truckloads full of this stuff and bringing it around to the community so you don't have to drive anywhere to get it. You can, you so will, where would you school age know, kids go get this? They all know. They all know a way. I teach at Humber College and I ask them, do you know what contraband cigarettes are? And they all laugh at me. Of course we do. I said, do you know where to get them? They all do. There's either someone that sells them off a loading dock, so someone that they know that comes to the plaza once a month that sells them out of the trunk of their car. One of the students was telling me that one of his high school classmates was selling them out of his own locker at the high school to, sure. su to supplement the income. So it's where there's a will, there's a way. The market's there. It's the black market. People find a way. And it's funding organized crime. And they're targeting young people, which someone seems, they seem to lose that message when they talk about taxes and they talk about products and they talk about who's making them and whatnot. They seem, people seem to lose the message that it's very, very bad people, organized criminal gangs that are making uh, high risk, sorry, it's a high reward, low risk enterprise for them and yeah. they're reinvesting that into other money and it really disturbs me that they'll pick on our young people. Our provincial government, you know, hey, we don't sell smokes to kids. We don't do that. We, you know, you can't, you know, we come down with a, the heaviest penalties possible if we find some convenience yep. store. But hey, look around the corner. Look in the park. Yep. Someone's selling them out of a van and no one's really doing much about that. But you can't possibly think, especially with your background in crime fighting, that this government um, has the fortitude and that's the polite word for it, to go out and send their bylaw officers to stop it. I mean, literally, they would have to work with the police of going out and stopping that. And, and the police are already trying to stop the it. The police are trying, but most of the police are handcuffed. Sure. Provincial police, municipal police <clears throat> do not have enough authority to conduct full investigations and large-scale uh, contraband operations. They have to sit around and wait for an Ontario Revenue yeah. Officer or a Mountie to come by, which is a disincentive. They can stop if they see uh, small amounts in plain view. They can issue a ticket. But we're talking such humongous amounts of money that the criminals won't stop until there's huge penalties and maybe even jail time. Yeah, it, it's an enormous industry. But hey, look, it got the headlines. And I think that's what the province wanted without even realizing that the bigger implication is driving it further underground. It's, it's frustrating. We've been talking about it for four years and they just keep dancing around the real issues. Yeah. All right. Well, Gary, I appreciate you coming in. We'll continue following it. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alan.